integrated wealth management. He's the president and founder here in the studio. Mark Lieberman, of course, our Fox senior economist. And Taryn Griffiths is a senior economist for the California and Nevada Credit Union League. She's a senior economist there. Good to have all three of you here. Thanks, guys. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Mr. Morning. Lieberman, this what a huge pullback in consumer price inflation. What does this tell you? Well, that's an important number. Clearly, it tells us inflation is off the table. But I think what we what we really ought to look at is that starts number. This yeah, the morning. starts and permits. That that speaks volumes not only to what's going on in the construction sector, but it underscores how bad the credit crisis is. Mm -hmm. It's not builders that build it are stopping so the building. The number being low, not worried about yeah. it because we don't want to build new homes right now. We want to get. We, we want to get some of the inventory out, And right? that's what the starts number reflects as well, but the starts number, I think, more reflects the how bad the credit conditions are, that builders can't get the financing. They, permits are easy. They're rel you file a piece of paper, there is some funding involved, but it's the starts that really cost money, and if you can't get the credit to, to put a shovel in the ground, you're not going to start building. Taryn, what are you seeing in terms of credit? You're with a credit union, and obviously this would indicate that access to credit is becoming more and more difficult. We're now talking about all kinds of ways to revitalize housing, but you tell me, what's your reaction? You know, I think this is just really indicative of how difficult the environment is and just how households remain really reluctant to act given the economy. You know, uh, first of all, Gary, give me your reaction. I, mean, I like it. I, I was hoping for a lower than expected number because the inventory is of, of, uh, unsold, of homes. unsold homes. Thank you. Is at a 10, 10 and a half, 11 month, depending on what you look at it, and it really has to come down. So I, I believe that this is a bad news, good news. So, release. Mark, if you're the Federal Reserve Bank today, I mean, first of all, real interest rates are already just at a fraction above mm -hmm. a percent. So cutting it by half a point today is not really going to have that much of an impact. But when you look at what's happening with the housing data and then you look at the massive pullback that we're seeing in inflationary expenses, what do you, what do, you do? How do you react? Well, I, the, the, the Federal Market Committee is very likely, to, as we've been reporting all morning, likely to cut rates, whether it's a half a percentage point or a full percentage point. It kind of doesn't matter. I mean, what the Federal Reserve has to do is do something to kick banks to make sure they put that money out there in the street, whether they put it out to, to uh, corporations or builders to build, whether they put it out to consumers to buy. And there's nothing... That's, that, it, that the Fed is doing, nothing that the Treasury is doing to force credit to, to open up. Increasing the money supply just doesn't do it. Banks, in fact, make their balance sheets look better mm -hmm. by sitting on cash, whether they're sitting on the TARP funds or sitting on money they don't lend out. So, Taryn, you work with both California and Nevada. A lot has been made about, obviously, how the real estate markets have done in both of those states, some of the hardest hit across the country. What are you seeing? What kind of activity are you seeing? What kind of credit facilities are you seeing? You know, well, what we've seen in California and Nevada is increased existing home sales. So we have seen a boost there, but it's foreclosure sales that are really driving the market right now. And with regards to credit, you know, credit unions, we continue to lend. Uh, we're out there serving our members, and we continue to do so into the foreseeable future. Now, you're continuing to lend, but are you continuing to lend at, you know, much higher, uh, you know, scores? And I mean, in other words, do people have to have, you know, a, a credit score of mid-700, low-700 in order to get access to that credit? Well, you know, one thing to remember is that credit unions are relatively conservative. So during this recent boom, we didn't relax our standards as much as other financial institutions. So during this kind of current crisis, we haven't had to tighten our standards as much. Gary, is, is, is what we're seeing today, frankly, just no surprise? I mean, is this kind of what we thought we were going to see? I know it's what I was expecting. And I believe that the markets lately on bad news have not been reacting to the downside. I mean, if there was an opportunity for the markets to drop and retest those lows, it was the Madoff scandal that broke last week. Mm -hmm. Today we have these numbers which are definitely anemic. There's no two ways about it. And I believe overall the S&P futures were up and they rallied on Goldman's bad report. So it almost seems like we've gotten to a point, maybe it's technically, where the bad news just doesn't affect us anymore. 
That, that really may be so, and I think, you know, we look at two sets of numbers coming in this morning. What we're hearing about prices, and it tells us, as, as I suggested earlier, mm -hmm. inflation is off the table as an issue. Mm -hmm. That's not to say we don't have to worry about where prices are, because the further prices go down, we... We start we worrying about inflation. Yeah, we work, go the other way, and there's a lot less that the Fed can do, or that anyone can do, if we uh, uh, in terms of policy actions on, to deal with deflation. Uh, there is a, a floor to what you can do with interest rates. And I, would, you know. I, I just want to make one quick point, which was raised before, and I think Lauren, um, uh, another pundit had brought it up uh, a week ago, which is right now long-term um, mortgages are in the low fives, mid fives, and you're getting a little bit more of the refinance activity. I think if we really want to stimulate people going out and buying homes, obviously credit has to be made available, but what about the government backstopping a plan where if the banks are typically lending at five and a quarter, five and three eighths, that the government steps in, takes a point off of that, and now we're lending in the low fours. Yeah. I think that there's a, there's would a add a substantial... Being discussed. Well, well, again... But the program being discussed will actually stop lending. As long as it's in the discussion stage, if you're sitting here saying, yes, hey, if the rates are going to come down, why am I going to pull the trigger now? Yeah, they're I, talking about 4.5% yeah. through the TARP mm -hmm. fund. But again, I don't know that interest rates make the difference. I think as long as home values are dropping, how much do I lend if I'm a lender? Yeah. What is the basis for the property, uh, the collateral? I know there's people like me who are waiting to refinance because I keep hearing about this. Not that we will necessarily be able to tap into that 4.5%, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people who think interest rates are going to come down another point, point and a half. But, but the longer you one. wait, even even the value Who's of your prevents? mansion goes down. Yeah. But you also yeah, have right. to start calculating the difference <laughs> between I had a mansion. five and a quarter and four and three quarters as it pertains to your payment. Yeah. So I have people in my office right now that are going through refinancing right now. And they're saying, I want to grab for rates right now. Very interesting. Even though they see rates possibly coming down further. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, okay. we're at kind of... Yeah, historically. But you know what? We set new rates. records, it seems, every day. <laughs> yeah, we do. History-wise. All right, Taryn, I uh, wish we could we'd be here in person with you, but thank you so much for joining us on Remote. And uh, Gary and Ray, thank you guys very much. Thank Coming you, up, thank we you. just...